Good afternoon to everyone. My name is Willie Stewart, a friend of Tom, Thomas Hope. We're gathered here tonight, this afternoon, to celebrate the life of Tom. My relationship as a, as a friend it began over 15 years ago at the community breakfast here at Urban Grace Church. Through that relationship, I found Tom to be an extraordinary person, a great mentor, a great friend, and one who had love for everyone. There were certain qualities about Tom that I shall never forget. He was a caring person. He was one who had vision for things. A person who was concerned about the welfare of others. An illustration of his love for humanity was probably best expressed on his commitment to the community breakfast here at Urban Grace for over 15 years. There were several points about that breakfast that we'll never forget about Tom. We had a tendency near the end of the breakfast to put away the chairs and tables. And Tom said to me, stop it. You want them to feel that they are loved and cared for. Wait until all of them are gone before you do that. Another illustration of his details. I was writing a note to his wife, Jewel. And I made the mistake of spelling it like we do in Texas. I said J-E-W with two L's. <laughs> it was amazing that he was quickly to see that and corrected me then. So Jewel, this is probably the first time you heard that comment. <laughs> Beyond that, he was a great professional person. Many of you are not aware of his distinguished career in the military that before many times there were make big decisions made with the military, it was he who briefed the higher command. Upon his retirement, he had a very successful photography business in the city of Seattle. After that venture, he moved to the great community of Tacoma, 12th and I Street, right across from St. Patrick's Church, and he established a studio in his basement, and he kept taking pictures of groups just as a hobby and as a friend. But a neat thing about Tom, he knew exactly when pictures should be taken. He did some beautiful phot photographs of, of the things here at Urban Grace Church. And so when you go down to the reception today, make sure you take advantage of all that information that's on the table. On a personal note, his commitment to the breakfast that it, we had to do And to make sure that would continue, he established a menu to, for us to follow. So even as Tom is gone, he's left his work for us and they live on. And people are saying, said, the grits are good. I said, I don't take credit. I'm just following the instructions that were established by Tom. Mm -hmm. Then on a personal note, a few years ago, the school district made a decision to name one of the schools the Willie Stewart Academy. And Tom was concerned that it would be do, done properly. And so, Tom, you've always lived, as you enter the academy at Ninth and Broadway, is this picture put together by Tom. And the only thing that's going to change, I'm going to put the caption on that, the work of my friend, Tom Hope. He wouldn't want that recognition, but I'm going to give it to him because he can make a decision. So, okay. so I ask that we follow the program that's printed, and at the conclusion of the Near the end of the program, I make the final comments and directions of what you follow this. Thanks for coming to remember Tom. And uh, I just want to tell you a little bit about his life. Uh, Tom was born in Petersburg, Virginia, and lived his early life in Washington, D.C. His family uh, settled in Florida, and he spent his teenage years and college years in Florida. He graduated from the University of Florida with a degree in journalism. He um, thought that he would work at a newspaper, but there was a military draft in place, and he knew he would be drafted into the military, so he wanted to uh, uh, decide which branch he would be in, and he chose the Navy. So he was, 
He became a naval officer. His specialty was naval intelligence. He uh, spent a lot of time traveling all over the globe. He was stationed in um, Turkey, Cyprus, Norfolk, Virginia, um, Japan, Vietnam, Washington, D.C. several times, um, Charleston, South Carolina, and Germany. And when his tour of duty was up in Germany, he decided that he had been in the Navy for 20 years, so he would retire. So he retired in Germany, and, um, and we spent the next year traveling around Europe in a VW camper. And we came home to Washington, D.C., and Tom's passion had always been photography. So he decided that he wanted to go back to school and learn more about photography. We had always lived on the East Coast, so he found a school on the West Coast, and it was the Brooks Institute of Photography in um, Santa Barbara, California. So we moved to Santa Barbara. He went to school for three and a half years, got a degree in commercial photography, and then we thought we would go back over the mountains to uh, Washington, D.C., but we had a friend who had come to the University of Washington to get a degree, and she was getting married in Seattle and invited us to her wedding. So <laughs> we, came, we came to her wedding. It was, I think, August, maybe. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the weather was beautiful. The mountain was out. We thought it was a very um, pretty place. But we went back to, to Santa Barbara, and she was getting married, and she invited us, she invited us to her wedding. And then um, it happened that she was marrying, the man she was marrying was a photographer in Seattle, and Ken Wagner, and he uh, invited Tom to come and work with him. And Tom, so we moved to Seattle. Uh, Tom had a studio there for 16 years, did lots of commercial work, and he also did a lot of photography for the artist community there. After 16 years, we moved to Tacoma. Um, we had a garage at the back of our house for a couple of months, and then it became a photography studio. <laughs> and Tom worked there for 20 plus years. He only retired a couple years ago. And mainly his work was photographing for the artist community there. Um, he, uh, the other thing that Tom loved to do was travel. We traveled a lot, of course, with the Navy, but we traveled a lot after the Navy, too, and we always had a small travel trailer, and we traveled all over the United States, lots of trips to the Southwest, to the Oregon coast, Washington coast, Canada, um, and every time we came back from a trip, he was always planning the next trip <laughs> for us to go. <laughs> um, he, he was always interested in civic um, duties, when we were in the Navy, when we were stationed stateside, we were foster parents. Um, he worked with, uh, way back in the 70s with the Clean Air Commission to clean up cities. <laughs> he volunteered at um, Big Brothers organization. He volunteered at Child Haven in Seattle. Um, he was a child advocate for the CASA program. Uh, he worked with the Little House Project and for the last several years, he's volunteered at, uh, here at Urban Grace for the community breakfast. And I think that was his favorite place to work. He loved coming every Sunday to help with the breakfast and bantering a, a, with Willie Stewart and George Kovats and Mark McDonald. And he enjoyed meeting all the people who come to work at the, at the breakfast. Also, Tom loved to cook. So, so making pots of grits for the community breakfast was his forte. <laughs> he, was, he, was, he loved doing that. Um, Tom lived a long, productive life. Uh, we still felt that he left us much too soon. He left a big hole in our hearts, a big hole in our family, and we miss him very, very much.
Well, uh, first of all, uh, bear with me as I read off my notes, but um, thanks a lot for, uh, for everybody coming out here and gathering today, and remember Tom. I'm grateful and appreciative, as I know he would have been. Um, uh, you know, standing here today, I said, uh, I'm reminded of uh, the finality of everything, of his passing, and of course I'm saddened that he's no longer here. He was a long-standing and positive influence in my life, and I feel that I am the person I am today because of him. He instilled in me a lot of core values of honesty, trustworthiness, respect, and compassion. And when talking to people uh, regarding his past, passing, I, I kept finding myself saying uh, he had a good run, and, uh, and I really believe that he did. He had a long and uh, fruitful marriage. They, uh, they had a good... <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, he, uh, and he loved people. He loved to interact with people, and he, he, always, uh, he always knew a lot about folks so that, he just, that he just met. Um, yeah, he would, uh, you know, he's a total people person. He's after meeting someone for the first time, he knew all about them, their family, their history, what their favorite, even sometimes even what their favorite color was, seemed, you know. He just knew, he just loved folks, and he always told me to, to, to reach out to people. Um, he said, everyone has an interesting story, you just have to find out about it. He, um, he had a real kind demeanor, and I thought an easy charisma made people uh, comfortable in his presence. <clears throat> Uh, things I also remember about him were his resonant voice. I remember hearing him in the uh, in the mornings. I could hear his uh, voice from uh, when I was upstairs. I could hear it throughout the house, um, and uh, not yelling, but just his voice. Um, um, he seemed to, uh, he, and he always had warm hands. I don't know if uh, if anyone had that experience, but he seemed when I when I shook his hand or anything, it was always warm. Um, it's another uh, thing what used to, he and I used to do was go see a lot of movies. I know some of you know <laughs> we would go see sometimes go see two movies a night, which was a tradition that uh, started with his mother, and that uh, I was I really enjoyed with uh, enjoyed doing with him. Uh, he introduced me to art. Another big thing was when we were living on the East Coast in Washington D.C. We went to the National Gallery of Art in Washington D.C. and. Uh, really big made a big profound impression on my life as far as art goes and uh in, introduced art to my life as well as music another nice memory i have of him is back in alexandria and we would uh sitting in a um leaning back in a recliner in alexandria virginia and listening to jazz in a darkened room we had both slicked our hair back <laughs> with uh yeah and i was laying on him and uh he would add jazz uh I think it was like Dave Brubeck playing. Um, um, I also always respected his worldview um, and, uh, and his compassionate uh, philosophy regarding life and people in general. Um, he grounded a lot of his thought, I believe, in, in Buddhist principles, which I thought was very cool. Um, he was a very good guy, and even though he had a, a good run, I will miss him the rest of my life. He once told me that he thought death was a... Uh, cosmic ripoff <laughs> and I agree with him <laughs> uh, I, you know um, uh, anyway uh, and I uh, I agree I will uh, aspire to be the best person I can to honor his memory he was always able to say the right thing to me whenever uh, I was having a difficult time seemed and uh, one quote that always helped me uh, was uh, and one that he liked to use quite a bit was even the worst of lives is better than the best of deaths. And I don't know how, why that resonated with me, but it has to this day. You know, um, I'm not a tattoo guy, but if maybe if I had got a tattoo, that would be a quote that I would probably put on there. Um, anyway, I want to thank you guys once again for, for coming out today. And I will leave you with a poem from a small book called uh, The Wild Anemone and other poems by James Laughlin from 1957. It was a little pamphlet actually that uh, was given, was sent to him from the author in, a, in response to a letter that he had written. And it's called, Well, All Right. <clears throat> if that's how it is, then that's how it is. And I'll just have to put you back in that box labeled, Wonderful People. Thank you. Yeah. Any friends?
guys will make a comment, please come to the stage because this is part of the recording that will be sent to assist Tom's sister. They will make a comment to Sister Tom. So I'm Susan Wagner, and I met Tom through my sister, who lived in South Carolina and were neighbors of Tom and Jewel, and later Christopher. <laughs> or maybe Christopher was already there, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> so um, you've heard his history of moving from one place to another and eventually over to uh, the state of Washington. Tom was a very complex person, and he had very, very high standards. So sometimes he could be pretty tough. But you always knew that he cared about you. He was a very kind and considerate person. He had a great sense of humor, and he was a terrible tease. <laughs> and if he knew that it was a button that he could push with you, he would continue and continue. He was so bad about that. Oh. He loved to travel, and we had the great opportunity to do many trips with Tom and Jewel in France. Tom knew where the one euro fill your bottle with wine was. He knew the best restaurants. And I still remember, and I don't know if you remember this, Jewel, but there was that wonderful cove that made great crepes. And for one birthday, yeah. we went there for my birthday. But he was unrelentingly a tease. <laughs> he was a no-nonsense person. And he genuinely cared about his friends and his family. He adored Christopher. The sun rose and set on him, and he loved Jewel to no end. And it was evident in everything he did. He loved the arts. He supported the arts. He loved this church and the people in it. He so enjoyed sharing with us the photographs that he took of the people he encountered here. They were beautiful. They came to life and they did so because he knew how to really understand the person. So as I was thinking about him, I thought of about this poem that I love that to me embodied much of who Tom is. It's called The Dash Poem, and it's by Linda Ellis. I read of a man who stood to speak at the funeral of a friend. He referred to the dates on the tombstone from the beginning to the end. He noted first came the date of the birth and spoke the following date with tears. But he said what mattered most of all was the dash between the years. For that dash represents all the time that they spent life on earth. And now only those who love them know what that little line is worth. For it matters not how much we own the cars, the house, the cash. What matters is how we live and love and how we spend our dash. So think about this long and hard. Are there things you'd like to change? For you never know how much time is left that can still be rearranged. If we could just slow down enough to consider what's true and real and always try to understand the way other people feel, be less quick to anger and show appreciation more and love the people in our lives like we've never loved before. If we treat each other with respect and more often wear a smile, remembering that this special dash might only last a little while. So when your eulogy is being read with your life's actions to rehash, 
Would you be proud of the things they say about how you spent your dash? Tom spent his dash well. He was an advocate for children through his ad litem, through the church. He was there because through his life experiences, he knew how important it was to make people understand that they were all important and cared for. So good to you, Tom. <laughs> and I know as friends that you appreciate all he did. And I hope that his learnings are passed on in your life to others. Hi, I'm Lynn Danino. Uh, I've kind of lost my voice, so we'll do the best we can. Um, I worked with Tom for about 35 or 40 years. Thank you. Um, I'm an artist, and we collaborated on the postcards we made for my shows. Eric, I'm going to pull the screen back just a little bit this way. In those 35 or 40 years, uh, we became close friends and uh, just had such a good time. I went to France a couple of different times with Tom and Jewel and Chris, and once also to Greece. And this was before the uh, time of cell phones. And for some reason, going to Greece, I had no phone number. I don't believe they carried a phone. And I had no address. So I arrive somewhere by airplane, and then I take a train, and I've been instructed to wait for them. And I'm downstairs on the bench outside, and they're upstairs waiting on the train uh, dock. And somehow I slipped by without seeing them. So I sat down there for about an hour wondering where I would be staying in Greece if I couldn't get them. <laughs> So they were pretty relieved when they finally came downstairs, and there I am sitting reading a book on a bench. <laughs> now, I'm surprised that's the very first shot. This is not the order I put them in, but this, of course, is a shot Tom took. And... Um, I apologize for being in so many of these pictures. The show's about Tom, but this shows you how clever he was. Uh, so I was making concrete necklaces for martyrs. <laughs> Here's a postcard Tom and I made, and you know, I would have a little bit of an idea, like, let's do something in Wright Park. And he would say, well, what if you dress in all white? And uh, he came up with these words. Um, she says it's natural. Uh, liar, liar, hair's on fire. So I, I love this uh, American Gothic image of Tom and Jewel. Tom had a, a curmudgeon look, I thought. And just beneath that surface, uh, he had a heart of gold, uh, an extremely generous uh, person, uh, kind, mostly. He did hate my dog, Nigel, but he loved my boyfriend. <laughs> so it worked out OK. He uh, was an artist himself, I think most photographers are, but he went beyond that. He went uh, through the neighborhoods in Tacoma and took these uh, stunning shots. And you might recognize this one. I believe this is on Pacific Avenue at almost 72nd. And everyone recognizes Frisco Freeze. And uh, these were the only two shots I could find of this series. He also um, was in some gallery shows here in Tacoma over the years. 
These are the Polaroids. Does anybody here remember when he was uh, taking Polaroids and then before the emulsion set, he would uh, blend them? And he had a show at Sandpiper Gallery, at least one show of these images. Here's a, a shot he took of one of my pieces. This is a Tammy Faye Baker on a television. She's got a Bible under her arm, and he knew how to take these very dramatic pictures. Uh, here's another one. Um, maybe celebrating is not the right word. They tore down the Luzon building here in Tacoma, much to our dismay. And that's Michael Sullivan trying to hold the building up. And uh, these are some figures inspired by a news story I heard about uh, the man that invented Doritos. And he was the first potato chip maker to hire scientists to get an exact, perfect combination of sugar, salt, and chemicals to make them addictive. And so there's, a, we'll say, that guy, uh, pinning Doritos onto all the Americans that are all overweight because they've been eating his potato chips. One of the first collaborations we did, he knew I was having a, I think it was a 50th birthday party. And he said, um, let's dress you up and take these shots and use it for the invitation. Um, this was before 9-11, but even then you couldn't go into an airport with cameras and stuff without getting in trouble. So I made that suitcase animal. Tom and I were in and out of there in about eight minutes. <laughs> so I ran into that line. He set up his equipment, and then we both grabbed the equipment and ran out before they got us. And this uh, was used for a uh, postcard uh, show announcement for some of the art shows that I did. Uh, here's another one. You can see that uh, striped dog is, uh, he's missing the fire hydrant and <laughs> peeing on my legs instead. <laughs> this was taken at Alki. Here's another uh, very clever Tom idea. He said, um, you know, your artwork is meant to be appealing all over the world, so why don't we have the front end of you and the back end of you in the photograph with the art? <laughs> this is a play on the Chihuly, um, uh, what do they call that there? Uh, yes, that's right, the C forms. So I discovered that you can hold a small plastic cup over an electric burner, and it automatically flutes into a chihuly shape. Try it yourself. <laughs> and then I painted it after that. So Tom, Tom was and I were both challenged, how do we make a postcard that sort of represents that so people in the know know what this one is referring to. Um, so that is a, a purple, I think it's a warthog, and there I am, Mother Nature, doctoring it up. So Tom would say, okay, you know, for this shot, why don't we do this, and why don't you dress in burlap, and uh, we need a wreath of flowers around your head. Now, I'm not really in that kangaroo pouch. This is a paste-up, all Tom's work. And then he loved knowing that I was born in Roswell, New Mexico. <laughs> and he said, when are we going to take advantage of that piece of information? <laughs> so we made this card. And I have to tell you about this one. Because Tom and I were approximately the same age, we both grew up with those uh, experiences. When you were a kid, your parents said, they're trying to get rid of you go out into the yard with a salt shaker, and if you can uh, put it on a bird's tail, you'll be able to catch the bird. And they could get rid of you for hours because you're never going to be able to accomplish that. 
So we used that idea, and when I published this postcard, almost everybody said to me, what does this mean? <laughs> <laughs> so you had to be a certain vintage to get it. We didn't care about that. So here I am with the uh, concrete chickens, chalkboard chickens, and Tom and I set that shot up, of course. And here's uh, another one of the garments that uh, he shot for me that I make. And then um, I put some other images in here. I, I know a lot of artists that, uh, who, whose work he photographed. And this one is Lauren Lukens. And so these would be the shots th that maybe Lauren would use to uh, enter a competition or something. And in Seattle especially, he was very uh, popular and well-known in the clay community. Those were Lawrence. This is Barbara uh, Smith, and that's one of her tapestries, and another. This is Reed Ozaki. I don't know what this is doing in here, out of order. <laughs> But uh, we made this into a frame triptych. Here's a piece by Jewel Nord, Jill Nordforce Clark, and another one of her pieces. This one is called Confetti. This is another reed piece, and that's the end. So um, I wanted to just mention the bigger uh, image show that you've been looking at. Uh, quite a few people helped me uh, gather those images. Christopher and Jewel helped, and uh, Grace and Jennifer, and who am I missing? Maybe that's it. So um, it's a collection of the portraits Tom did at the beginning of the show, and then um, some of their uh, work downstairs, uh, feeding uh, the homeless, and then shots of their trips uh, from France and Greece and other places. So I'm going to miss Tom big time. Thank you. Before I make the closing comments, are there any other friends who want to come and say a few words about Tom? Uh, we also have an opportunity down here. So just come forth, please. Just a quick comment. Um, my wife and I are neighbors of Tom and Jewel for many years. And in the end of 2006, we adopted a dog and brought it back. And that's when we met Tom, because we were walking the dog. It was about an eight-month-old dog. And this man comes running out of the house. <laughs> and he says, you know what kind of dog you got? <laughs> and it turned out that our dog was an English Shepherd. And he had grown up with an English Shepherd that looked just like her, named Sarge, when he was a child. And so it's very important for him to keep tabs on, her name was Rahina, Rahina all her life. She lived 17 years. We had to put her down about a year ago. But he always kept tabs on her. And of course, we tried to keep tabs on their two dogs, too. But we were, our interconnection was dogs. <laughs> I don't have any prepared statements, but my name is Sharon Smith. My husband's Michael. We, Mike met Tom at Glazer's in Seattle. 
<laughs> and I met Tom outside of St. Patrick's on our daughter's wedding day. <laughs> and so that's been a good 30 years. And Tom and Jewel and Chris have done so much and added so much to our lives. Our first trip we took with them was to France, and it was as I was recovering from chemo with a stage three cancer. And it just, it brought tears to my eyes and everything we saw on that trip is still in my mind. And I just, there's no way to thank what Tom did for me and for Mike at that time. And over the years, we went back to France with them a couple, few more times. We went to Andalusia, we went to Greece, and Tom just opened the world for us. And then we turned out that what we really knew is that Jewel and I each had a baby at the same hospital in Japan, <laughs> just a few, a few years apart. And then it turns out that Mike, and Mike was stationed in Germany and we were there, and Tom and Jewel had been there, and we were just a few years off on all of these steps. So it just felt like we were meant to know them. And I just have to thank you so much for letting Tom be in our lives and sharing his life with us. He meant a lot to us. Thank you. <laughs> Tom and Jewel were not official members of this congregation, but I want to express my gratitude to them for the love that they demonstrated to Jewel and Chris this day. The program that you've been looking at was put together by Sue Brown and a staff member, and Sue is in the back of the room, and Sue, we're very appreciative of that. The table arrangements downstairs, one of our volunteers, Boom Latrell, came in this morning very early and woke me up telling me the chairs were all in place in the tables of love. And we were concerned about whether or not the caterer could get in, and then two friends from the breakfast, Roger and Stephanie Johnson, delayed coming to this part of it so they could make sure the caterer was there to provide food. Not that we need it, but that's a part of the process. And also, the impact of his friends Jim was a part of us for a long time at the breakfast, and Janet, and they're here today, as well as Doug, who knew him as a part of the breakfast group. So all of you, we are very grateful for you. We're grateful for Justin, who made sure the room was warm, and we had all the things that are provided. As we go downstairs to celebrate, I want you to remember, Tom, you may not, I mean, I think when Mayor Angelo wrote this, one of her poems or statements, she had Tom in mind. And I'm going to paraphrase it by saying this. You may not remember Tom as a soldier. You may not remember him as a photographer. You may not remember what he did in life. But the one thing you will remember is how he made you feel in his presence. So to my fellow friend and soldier, rest in peace and farewell, Tom. I'd like for Chris and Tom to go out first, and then we can follow and just go down the stairs, hold on to the rails, we don't, because we're all of that age where we don't have the stability that we used to have, and we don't want any accidents, and we don't want any lawsuits to follow. Thank you. <laughs> 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 